Hello. So um, a little while ago, I asked if some of you would want me to do read like a little bit from my books and a bunch of you wrote in and said, yeah, that would be fun. So I'm going to just read a little bit. So this is called story time. So for you tea timers who are looking for tea time, there's, as you can see, no tea, <laughs> just me. So I'm going to just read like a couple chapters from each book and not all at once, but like just so on story time, then if you want and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go to bed and I want to hear somebody reading to me, then you can you can click it on. I'm only allowed to read 10% um, of my books. So don't worry, I won't be reading 400 pages. <laughs> so uh, so I'll read. I just thought I'll start with Solace Island. And then what I'll do is I'll just read a chapter and then next time I can read another chapter and and like that. And then until I've got to my 40 30%? No, 10%. <laughs> I wish it, I was like 30, 40. No, 10% is what I'm allowed to read uh, according to my publisher. So I'll just do that and then I'll move on to the next book. So then you can just, you know, sometimes it's comforting to hear somebody's voice while you're drifting off to sleep, but I'm not saying anything oh so interesting. I'll just read a storybook. Okay. So here we go. I'll put the blanket on because it's story time. Snuggle in, you guys. Alrighty, I'll get a pillow to put it on. This is, um, so this one's, the one I'm going to read now is from Solace Island. This is the regular one. They have a different cover for the UK and the European Union and Australia, stuff like that. And then you have a different cover as well for the large print, which <clears throat> I'm going to read from the large print because, um, I don't know, because I got it. So, Solace Island, chapter one. Maggie Harris had her cell phone jammed against her right ear, a finger stuffed in her left, but still Brett's voice was an indistinct murmur. Mur murmur. There'll be a lot of that because I'm not going to just redo it all over. Whenever I go blah, blah, blah with my mouth, um, <clears throat> we'll just, I'll just keep going, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll start from the beginning again, but after that I won't start. I'll just go blah, 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 <laughs> okay? Maggie Harris had her cell phone jammed against her right ear, a finger stuffed in her left, but still Brett's voice was an indistinct murmur. Uh, uh, so sorry, honey, could you please speak a little louder? It's kind of noisy in here. That was an understatement. The club was packed with writhing, sweaty bodies, undulating to the pounding pulse of the music, not to mention the shrieking laughter of her eight bridesmaids and assorted female family members and friends. Maggie felt a tug on her arm. It was uh, Carol Endicott from the office who had been knocking back shooters since they had arrived an hour ago. Maggie didn't know her very well, but the woman's husband had walked out on her and their kid after 10 years of wedded bliss. Probably not the best person to invite to one's bachelorette party. However, uh, Carol had overheard Maggie and Sarah making plans and Maggie hadn't had the heart not to include her. Mag stirs, Carol slurred, leaning close, stumbling slightly. Come on, girl, off the phone, it's party time. She wore a big, sloppy smile. Her mascara was smeared, and wisps of frizzy blonde hair clung to her perspiring face. Let's have fun, she bellowed like an elephant in heat. Maggie held up one finger. Oh, one moment, Carol, she mouthed. It's Brett. Oh, Carol said, throwing up her hands and tiptoeing backwards, eyes wide like a cartoon character, removing herself from a bomb site. The lovebirds. Ooh, I better give you some privacy, seeing as how you're talking to the fabulous Mr. Norland. Y yes, um, well, <clears throat> Maggie smiled at Carol. Thanks. I, I think I'll just she tipped her head towards the bathrooms and started moving past Carol. Good idea, Carol said, giving Maggie a crazy harsh nudge in the ribs and attempt a wink, an attempt at a wink. I'll tell the gang you're in the pot ski having phone sex so they won't interrupt in an inopportune moment. She bleated and then lurched off. Jeez. Maggie said, watching her leave. I am uh, very grateful not to have a drinking problem. Huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's nothing, Brett. Uh, hang on a second, Maggie said. She started weaving her way through the crowd. Once she was in the restroom, she heaved a sigh of relief. 
It was cooler in there, almost peaceful. She could still hear the thump and roar of the music, but it was muffled. Oh, thank goodness, she said. You still there? Yeah, Brett said. His voice was mostly clear, just a little static. What time is it? Uh, it's 10.15. Look, babe, I just wanted to... 10.15? Oh, my gosh. Oh, we've only been here an hour. Oh, I'm pooped already. How long do you think I need to stay? I mean, don't want to be rude or anything. Everyone's come from so far away. But I got to say, this going to clubs, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, the meat market behavior typical of these places, it's just, it's really not me. Maggie laughed. Well, you know that better than anyone, don't you, honey? I am so glad we met. Yeah, well, I can hardly wait till this is over. Maybe I can drop by after, if it's not too late. I just to snuggle in bed with you. Oh my goodness, my feet are sore, Maggie said, slipping off her heels. The polished concrete floor was cool and soothing under her feet. Uh, that might be a problem. I know, right? I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know why I let my sister talk me into those strappy, sparkly heels to finish off my wedding ensemble. I should have stuck with my original idea and bought those glittery Doc Martens. Nobody cares what you're wearing underneath. And then I'd be comfortable, Margaret. Brett cut in. I need you to stop talking for a minute. Can you do that? Wh what? Maggie's breath caught in her chest. He'd used her formal name and his voice sounded strange. Are you all right? Is everything okay? You didn't get in an accident, did you? No, I'm fine. I just want it. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. A wave of relief rushed through her. How horrible would that be? You having to hobble up the aisle in your handsome tux on a pair of crutches? Can you shut up for a minute? I've been trying to tell you something for the last five minutes, but you just keep jabbering on and on and on. Wait a minute, did Brett just tell me to shut up? You know, I've been doing a lot of soul searching the last couple months, Brett said, and I just, I just, I can't do it. Maggie's stomach lurched as her world, her happy ever after future suddenly swerved off course. She felt both removed from her body and hyper aware of her surroundings, like she was an alien observing the events of her life. The water dripping from the faucet, the beating of her heart, it all sounded loud, loud, loud. Her mouth tasted like chalk, throat constricted. You can't, you can't do what, she asked but she already knew the answer. Okay, that's the first chapter. So come in, check into story time for chapter two. Bye.